The year is 2318. A weary traveler has braved the hellscape that is post-apocalyptic Vancouver for a rumored stash of still-functioning gaming hardware. Aw, oh, come on! I hiked three months to get to that? <sighs> I mean, I could plug that graphics card into it, which I guess would make the bot parasites kind of worth it. But first, a sponsor to help offset those scavenging costs. Today's video is sponsored by Be Quiet's new Dark Rock Pro 5, or if you're feeling real e-light, the Dark Rock Elite. Both coolers are rated for over 250 watts of TDP, come with easy installation, and you can even slip the middle fan in, which I really like. Both coolers also come with excellent RAM clearance for such ginormous beings, and with the Elite, you get just a splash of tasteful RGB. Check out the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5 and Elite using the link in the video description. Now before we go about trying to figure out how to even strap a graphics card to what is essentially your granny's all-in-one, let's have a look at the graphics card we dug out of a post-apocalyptic Denny's parking lot. I found an RX 7700 XT, a graphics card that I think will pair very well with the Pentium Gold in the Granny Matron, the kind of CPU to bottleneck its own iGPU. Ooh, there is some pretty obvious plastic molding issues on this front, but you're not gonna see that bit mostly, I guess, from this angle. In terms of specs, we've got 12 gigs of video memory, we've got a pretty standard modern graphics card I.O. The cooler is gigantic and airy. I'm sure with the GPU running at like 20% utilization, it's gonna have its work cut out for it. And then we have this metal backplate. This is not the worst graphics card to find in a post-apocalyptic pile of suffering. So now that we've met the exciting RX 7700 XT, it's time to rip the back off the granny PC and see if we can make the two mate somehow. Uh, now comes one of the worst device teardown processes I've ever experienced. Hopefully I kind of softened it up last time, but if anything, the previous teardown just enraged the Granny Matron because it was putting up more of a fight this time. Oh, oh that does not want to let go. It just popped out last time. Uh, why was that so... <laughs> Jesus, I hate that process so much. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, how am I gonna plug a graphics card into here? There's clearly no space, you idiot. But I have a really good idea about how that's gonna work. First, let's get this kind of cod piece thing off and I'll show you. Now, clearly, there's no 16x PCIe slot for us to plug a graphics card in with. But what we do have is an M.2 slot over here and the, like, weird Wi-Fi version of the M.2 slot. Which is where this little device comes in, which I've actually used in a video before for a very similar use case to this. You just take this little guy and then plug it into... Oh, there's a difference between an M.2 Y. Oh, oh. And that's the moment I learned that mini PCIe and M.2 Wi Fi are, in fact, different connectors. So it's been several days, and we finally got all the accessories we need to plug a graphics card into the system in various interesting ways. The first adapter I'm gonna try should let me plug a mini PCIe device into an M.2 Wi-Fi slot. Cool, so we've got a thing now sitting in a place that we wanted to, so now I can hopefully connect that adapter up to this. Oh, I'm gonna have to shift the standoffs closer. Wait, they're soldered down? What, 
What is the point of having multiple standoff locations, but then soldering the default position down? Anyway, it's fine. We can fix this. Yeah, it's nothing a bit of duct tape won't fix. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I've just noticed a pretty big problem. Uh, the stand for the monitor can only mount to this plate. And I can't mount this plate back because that cable, like, it doesn't go past this bit of the... Yeah. So I'm kind of thinking my best bet here is to just use this lying open face down on the table like that with an external monitor plugged into the graphics card. Nice. This is starting to really look like something dug out of a post-apocalyptic pile. We flip the power on for the graphics card. That's the power button. A few moments later. Okay, we're not getting a signal out. This is probably a really bad idea, but I kind of want to see what the display on the thing's doing. I mean, this display is doing stuff, but even device manager isn't reading the graphics card. It's like it's not plugged in. So I guess we've got to try a different adapter. I don't know, this one seems pretty janky because, well, this, which leads to like a SATA power connector, is the only thing that's giving the GPU any power through the PCIe connector. That's all that gives the, the PCIe slot power. But as far as I understand it, it is keyed for both forms of M.2 slot. So let's try the Wi-Fi M.2 first. That looks fine. <laughs> I think. I don't know. Let me just tape the connector down because the screws don't align for some reason. But despite a very professional looking setup, this adapter didn't work either. It's not detecting it again. So I think the issue is the port. So we are going to have to sacrifice the Windows M.2 drive. But after swapping in some SATA storage to free up the M.2 slot, I ran into a different problem. It doesn't work for both. Oh, bother, that is not good. Apparently it wasn't keyed for M.2. And the final adapter I bought for M.2 to mini SATA wouldn't fit in the M.2 slot because the ethernet port was blocking it. Okay, so <laughs> we're going back to the other adapter now, but that, oh, that also doesn't fit. And just like that, I had to head back to Amazon to order more of these stupid adapters. Ah, so this is adapter 17 at this point, which just shows that this isn't a very good post-apocalyptic gaming setup idea, because you're not gonna find 17 different versions of this adapter just lying around, are you? But maybe this is the one that works, let's see. Straight off the bat, this one looks more promising, because it takes actual power for the PCIe slot. And then you've got this little mini HDMI looking connector that plugs into this one, that then sits in the M.2 slot. And then you connect them using this cable that smells strongly of industrial cleaning chemicals. This one also needs to be taped down. I guess it doesn't seem any more precarious than any of the previous implementations, although this one somehow feels quite promising. A few moments later. Never mind, that also didn't work. I just have one left, so I'm kind of <laughs> quickly running out of options. And just like that, the fate of gaming in the apocalypse rests on your shoulders, young adapter. If you fail like those before you, with you dies our hope of disassociating from the apocalypse, and the butt parasites would have been super not worth it. Oh! It, it does, though. And not only did Device Manager register it, AMD's drivers did as well. And once I was finished shouting about why it always takes me 17 attempts to get anything to work, I was ready to do some gaming. Ooh, with Battlefield 5 at 1080p high settings, our little Pentium's pretty spicy. We're getting about 60 frames per second. <laughs> Granted, there's not a lot of GPU utilization happening, but that is keeping the power draw down, which would make it much easier to run off a diesel generator. It also helps to pretend that with a proper CPU, this GPU doesn't get over 200 frames per second. <laughs> Whoa, again, it seems like post-apocalyptic gaming isn't gonna be that bad. I mean, 
granted, the 7700 XT is being wildly underutilized, and we did drop to about 20 frames per second there, uh, but this is not the kind of bottlenecking I'm used to. This Pentium Gold is doing really well. I mean, I'm, I'm used to just half of the game not loading ever. Oh, oh, things, oh, things fell apart there quite quickly. Speaking of things not loading in properly, look at that, GTA 5 has met the minimum requirement for playability. Holy crap, look at how Starfield's running on the little Pentium gold. I was gonna say D. Uh, it's almost like this game's based on an 800-year-old engine. Oh, yeah, see, that, that, that's the issue with the Starfield performance. That doesn't dump you out of the immersion immediately at all. Loading times are a real limitation of the little granny Matron, especially The Last of Us, which took a solid 45 minutes to load in. Wow, that took an obscene amount of time to load. I was worried the actual apocalypse was gonna happen in the meantime. Uh, but now that we're finally into The Last of Us, as you can see from the frame time graph, there's there's a lot of terrible things going on. You kind of want that to just be a smooth line and it shouldn't look like it's mapping out an earthquake. Having said that, this is a pretty good combination of hardware to dig out of a radioactive pile and it should be a great, if stuttery, distraction from all the dysentery you're definitely gonna have. Which actually reminds me of a study I recently read about how David does text stuff subscribers will have 13% less violent dysentery if an apocalypse does happen. Just keep that in mind until the next video, and until then, bye-bye.